next speaker is uh, uh, Robert Hillman from Data Device Corporation. He um, has presented before, as I said, and uh, we've had a long collaboration around their single board computer. So, uh, Robert. Uh, yeah, so um, we've actually uh, presented back in 2019 and what we call the SCS 3740. We're using the GR740 processor. So uh, I'll be covering uh, the existing 3740 that we've developed over the last three years, as well as our next generation um, GR740 type board. I'm Robert Hillman, the engineering director for DDC Space, and I've worked here for about 24 and a half years. So we'll cover uh, component and SBC roadmaps, um, the volatile and non-volatile memories. Um, we tried to focus on, in this case, on the memories that we think will be more applicable to your GR740 and the GR765. Um, the existing GR740 board that we've built called the 3740. Um, it's fully qualified. We've, uh, you know, vibe, thermal, shocked, uh, you know, TVACT, um, and we've also gone through full acceptance level testing on flight boards and ship flight boards to uh, customers as well. Um, we have uh, some, a couple technical challenges um, we wanted to bring up. Um, they're not showstoppers, but I'm hoping that uh, if other people are having similar challenges, maybe we can provide that feedback to um, to the technical team uh, at the factory and and uh, you know come up with solutions for them. Um, then then the 3740G2, which is our our second generation of the GR740, uh, it'll be available in the Rad Tolerant and Rad Hard. The Rad Tolerant version will have the uh, the plastic GR740 and uh, and target lower TID for some of the components and a lower cost point. Um, right now, this board's in development. Um, Near the middle of the end of next year, we'll have in 2023, we'll have uh, engineering boards and then flight boards uh, in 2024. So we have uh, DDC cells, volatile and non-volatile memories. We saw a lot of other items, but we're just focusing on the ones I think are most applicable to computer boards. In this slide, um, we do have a DDR2 memory. It's all of these are ceramic, hermetic, and 100 kilorad or greater for, for most orbits. Um, we have a lot of other products in the past, but I'm not going to cover those. Um, these are just the ones we've developed recently. Uh, on the GR740, we, we're coming out with a new SD RAM that's a 4 gigabit in a single module, and that'll work well with uh, the GR740, and that's the one we're using on our, our second generation uh, 3740 board. Um, in the future, we're, we are looking at, uh, at the GR765, and that needs I believe a DDR3 type memory. We're looking at possibly coming out with DDR3 and DDR4 memories in, in the future on our roadmap. And then in terms of non-volatile memory, uh, we've been developing WE problems back since the 1990s. We've been using our WE problems on our space boards for um, you know 20 some odd years. Uh, we do have a, a one terabit flat or a quarter terabit flash NAND, and that's used on our existing uh, 3740 board with the GR740. And these these are components not only do we use on our boards, but they're also available if if anyone's interested in developing their own GR740 with these components. And then we're looking at eight and sixteen terabit uh, modules um, that would have high speed uh, serial links. These might be applicable to the GR765 to easily add a, a lot of flash memory on um, on one of your single board computers. So in the past, we've had uh, we've actually uh, back in the 19 late 1990s or early 2000, we did develop around a Leon processor board. So this just kind of shows what we've done over the last few years. But we have done previous space boards back to uh, you know 8486s and some of the Geissler processors. But um, then we started doing uh, triple redundant power PCs. Um, those were um, you know these are kind of uh, sustaining. Uh, we're kind of de developing new component board, new boards now with your GR740 processor, the 3740, um, which we cover here. And, and like I said before, it's already built flight boards and qualified them. And then the G2 uh, version of that board, uh, we're in development right now, and we'll be powering it up in the next, uh, you know, three to six months and, and uh, shipping engineering boards, and then going into flight the following year. And then uh, after that, um, there's a lot of exciting processors out there, including the GR765, which 
are very interested in seeing. And um, we, right now this is a TBD, but we're looking at possibly inserting uh, the GR765 as our as our next uh, next processor board after the G2. So uh, for the GR740, it has a single data rate SDRAM interface. Um, we uh, we have an existing one that's on the picture on the right. That's on our existing GR740 board, the 3740 board. And um, we needed a lot more memory. Right now, our board has 128 megabytes. We wanted to get to a gigabyte. So we've developed a higher density uh, SDRAM to do this. Um, you know, I, I won't go through all the details. Uh, it's 100 megahertz. Um, you know, we have very good signal integrity. It's compatible with the GR740 as well as other FPGAs. It's a small ceramic chromatic package, which goes well with uh, the existing GR740 processor. Um, uh, and the, the total dose is 100 kilorad or greater. The bare die doesn't even need shielding, but um, um, you know, with a shielding, you can get even higher than 100 kilorad. And uh, these will be available in engineering uh, at near the end of next year and then flight the following year. And then we do have a DDR2. Um, I, I know there's, I can't remember if the GR765 has DDR2 interface. I know it has a DDR3 interface, um, but uh, you know this this is just a DDR2 product. In case if you have an FPGA or a processor that has a DDR2 interface, um, all in one small ceramic hermetic component with columns, uh, you're able to get uh, up to eight die, so up to eight gigabit. And so now we get into the uh, what we call the 3740, which is the GR740 processor uh, 3U space BPX board. On here, you can see uh, we kind of put some arrows here showing the different uh, the different components. You can see the GR740 in the upper left, uh, with the DDC SD RAMs on the upper right, um, our double EEPROMs, which are 20 megabit each um, on the left, and then our quarter terabit flash NAND modules on, on the bottom right. Um, we, we do take advantage of the error correction in the GR740 for our SDRAM. We do additional error correction for our, our double EEPROMs, and we do uh, BCH uh, bit level correction um, through an FPGA or software for our, our flash NAND memories. A lot of the interfaces listed on here are pretty much from the GR740. Uh, it is an SOC, so it, it lends itself really well to uh, minimizing component count on the board and giving us a lot of interfaces. So we do use all the space wire ports, six to the back plane, two to the front panel. We've had a lot of customers say they wanted one or two to the front panel, so that's that's why we ran a couple to the front panel. Um, we did run the Ethernet through to the back plane. Uh, we do have an Ethernet PHY on here on the back side, as well as an FPGA and our tax FPGA and all the power conversion. Um, on the P5 connector on the front, on the bottom there, you can see um, we do support the spacewire debug port, um, the serial ports, uh, the CAN bus, and then other miscellaneous interfaces. Um, and then the standard specs on the GR740, the performance, uh, we do put 128 megabytes on this board, and our G2 board will have a lot more memory. Uh, our ECC flash is 32 gigabytes. Um, and uh, one challenge we've had is we've had a hard time getting this board to consume as much power consumption as uh, as our worst case analysis. So uh, that's kind of a funny funny point. But um, typically, this whole board consumes about three or four watts in the lab, and our worst case analysis shows it should, under a you know thermal uh, and and uh, worst case conditions, we should have expected around uh, six or seven watts. And we haven't in all of our qual and acceptance level testing been able to get to that yet. But uh, um, so it's that's a good thing, I guess. The GR740 is extremely low power um, and lends itself to extremely low power boards. Uh, we put on here low power five watt typical. Um, customers typically don't even see that uh, in engineering. And uh, our, our entire boards, at least 100 kilorads. Um, the GR740 has extremely good upset rates, and that coupled with error correction on the board and our component selection of the other components on the board, uh, we typically see uh, uncorrected error rates around 120 years in a geo orbit. 
this is really, uh, really fantastic. A lot of the space computer boards out there don't come anywhere close to this type of an uncorrected upset rate. So I think that's, uh, I think that's a great selling point for the for the GR740 and and for the the boards that use it. Um, you know, and and uh, as most people probably are aware, I mean, it's a it's a rad hard by design library. Uh, the GR740 has great upset rate. Um, Built-in error correction for the SD RAM, which which we uh, we use, and then um, it doesn't really have a flash NAND interface, so we interface uh, to the flash NAND through an RTAX FPGA, and then uh, we can do uh, bit level error correction for that. And then uh, we also have rad hard point of load converters, clock distribution, um, you know, and, and other miscellaneous glue logic on the board. So this is just uh, um, showing our 3740 on the left, um, the user test board on the bottom, which is essentially, you know, our, our main goal of this was how do we, how do we allow customers to easily use our board and still have a flight-like board, but when they plug it in, they get engineering-like uh, features. So this allows you to take a flight board or an engineering board it's just it's, it's essentially a flight board uh, but with lower screening um, plug it into this test chassis and have all the signals broken out so all of the back plane signals are broken out to this user test board on the bottom right um, we have a front panel test connector um, on the flight board the p5 connector and we have a little uh, front panel test board that plugs into that and gives uh, serial port connections um, converts the spacewire debug port to a spacewire connector and does the level translation uh, to, to differential and uh, you know the serial ports, uh, dip switches, LEDs, all the things you wouldn't want to have on a flight board. We do that in our dev kit so that someone can take a flight board or an engineering board and uh, and break it all out and use it in, in an engineering lab. This also, um, you know, all the signals going to the back plane come down to the user test board. The user test board then has uh, uh, takes the 1553 signals and uh, has a transceiver transformer. Um, it, the, the neat thing about the GR740 is if a customer wants to use the 1553, they can, um, and they can enable that. If they don't want to use that, they can disable it, and then they can use um, use it for general purpose I/O. So we've kind of made our user test board so our customers can disable our 1553 uh, transceiver transformer. And then they can use them as GPIOs as well, or they can enable it, and we have the connectors here, so they can just plug them right into their 1553 bus. Um, we also implemented other connectors on this user test board. Um, there's a couple connectors in this picture that are kind of hard to see that say factory use. But that user test board also gets plugged into our production test setup um, through National Instruments hardware and things like that. So we can fully automate the production test setup of the flight board, the dev kit, um, so it's essentially pushing buttons and resets and generating interrupts and generating traffic um, to test all the interfaces before we'd ship one of these. One in, uh, couple of the technical challenges that we, <clears throat> we, we have and we still have, one is the uh, Ethernet timing. Currently we, we support 10 and 100 megabit um, Ethernet and we don't support gigabit Ethernet on our 3740 board. Uh, one of the main challenges is um, the interface between the GR740 and the Ethernet Phi. And that interface should run at 125 megahertz to get to gigabit Ethernet. Um, we have talked with uh, the Geisler team about um, different strategies to, uh, to try and approach gigabit Ethernet and, uh, and that's it sounds like they're looking into that. Um, I just don't know if, if anyone else is having this problem, um, but when we do our worst case analysis and timing, and we're trying to run 125 megahertz, which is an eight nanosecond period, um, you know, we can't do that with, with uh, uh, clocked output delay uncertainty and, uh, and the, way that, the way we generate the clock um, to the GR740. Um, and then it's clocked output is, is giving us an, an impossible time to do setup and hold time, uh, worst case analysis for that. So there's been a couple of discussions on how to, how to go around that, um, either having an interim FPGA 
or um, maybe screening the parts or, or things like that. So I think we, we're definitely interested in uh, if anyone uh, has any suggestions later, you're welcome to come, you know, contact us or, uh, or maybe talk with uh, the factory about uh, other suggestions to support Gigabit Ethernet. It is, it is the fastest interface off of the GR740 and having a Gigabit Ethernet interface, I think would be uh, a huge benefit. I, I mean, I realize that the processor performance with the SD RAM, uh, which will be the next topic below this, um, but I, I understand, you know, pushing a full gigabit Ethernet may be hard to do just from a data throughput and a processing standpoint. Um, in terms of the GR740 the SD RAM interface, um, we're unable to support 100 megahertz even with the 2T signaling. Uh, there's a there's a couple signals that even with the 2T signaling we we can't meet um, the 100 megahertz, which would be we'd have to meet setup and hold time in a in a 10 nanosecond window, and uh, the clock to out on on the data output delay is is between two and a half and twelve. So, um, you know, I think the the way to work on both of these is we we're using ten one hundred for the GR seven forty, and a lot of customers are happy with that. We just have a few that really would like the gigabit. And in terms of the SD RAM, we're running we're running it, and we meet all worst case analysis. We're just not running at hundred megahertz. We're running at a, a lower clock rate. So the uh, the second generation uh, SBC. So you know we we started the development of the GR740, uh, our first version, which is the 3740, back in 1999, and shipped engineering boards back in 1999. We've uh, you know over the last few years, now that we've shipped flight boards and we've had customer inquiries saying, hey, I'd really like these other features. That's where our G2 comes in. Um, you know we're going to. We've already designed it essentially, uh, and we're going to be going into fab in the next couple months. But uh, the goals, uh, and I think we meet all these goals, are essentially uh, pin out and functionally compatible with the existing ones, so our customers can go from the existing board to the G2 uh, very easily. Uh, increasing the SD RAM eight times more memory, up to one gigabyte. Uh, increasing uh, uh, boot memory non-flash. So. Some customers using our flash memory, they'll, they'll boot out of the double EEPROM and then they'll start accessing uh, and running code out of the flash. But uh, this is in terms of how do we, you know, because we've got plenty of flash memory. How do we get somebody in easy bulletproof memory they can boot out of, you know, that's more than our four megabyte double EEPROM. And so we're, we're going into MRAM and increasing it to 128 megabytes of MRAM on the board. And, uh, we have redundant SUROM and operating system images. So, for example, if the board starts booting up and the SUROM is corrupt, um, you know, it'll automatically detect that, swap over to the secondary SUROM. If there's a, 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 you know, an operating system image that's corrupt uh, during the boot process, it can check a secondary or a third uh, image and then select the right image and boot out of them. So we have quite a bit of redundancy there. Um, currently, we support VxWorks 7. And with these features, it'll also help us uh, support Linux even more. And that'll be planned for the end of next year. And then uh, we're speeding up our flash memory interface and adding our correction to the FPGA. And then this board will be available in uh, low cost rad tolerant board, as well as a rad hard. Uh, this is just a, a block diagram of essentially our existing 3740 modified to the G2 board. and. Uh, we didn't have to make very many modifications to get to the G2. It's essentially taking out the existing SD RAM and inserting our new SD RAM memory, taking out our double EEPROM and inserting MRAM. And that allows us, and then the third area, which we don't really go into detail here, is uh, upgrading the RTAX to a larger RTAX FPGA and putting uh, error correction for the flash in the FPGA. But otherwise, uh, all the interfaces are pretty much the same. Um, this is just an example of a, a space fi. If anyone's using the GR740 and they need 1553, DDC does have a single component that has the uh, that has um, you know the transceiver, the transformer, everything all built in. So you just supply it with 3.3 volts, connect it to the GR740, and now you have a 1553 bus, and that's available you know space qualified, and we use that on our. On our um, our dev kits and on our boards too. 
And then uh, this is the last slide. Um, this is just uh, the same picture of the existing 3740, just showing um, you know, that essentially we're taking out these SD RAMs and putting in the new SD RAMs. We're taking out the double E PROMs and putting in uh, you know, the, the one gigabit MRAM, 128 megabytes. Um, this, the quarter terabit flash will be sped up, but uh, otherwise everything else will be the same. Um, we'll add Linux, uh, we'll add a lower cost option for the board. And uh, these boards will be available near the end of next year.